Ichi, ni. Japanese sake is taking the world by storm. Want to up your sake game? You're in the right place. Welcome to Kampai Planet, bringing you the world of Japanese drinks direct from the heart of Tokyo. I'm Mac, and here are five tips to easily and instantly help you improve your knowledge and enjoyment of Japanese sake. Number one, understand what sake is. Sake is a brewed alcoholic drink in which the only fermentable ingredient is rice. Let's break that down. Sake is brewed like beer. It's not distilled like whiskey or vodka or Japan's indigenous spirits, shochu and awamori. It's alcoholic. It's typically sold at between 14 to 16% ABV with a legal maximum of 22%, which is very rare because the yeasts used in sake production typically struggle to survive past 20%. Some people seem to be under the impression that sake is alcoholically much stronger than it actually is. And I think that may arise because traditionally it is drunk in small receptacles in Japan. Sake is made with a minimum of four ingredients, rice, water, yeast, and koji mold. And I say minimum because some sake is made with the addition of brewing alcohol and some lower grades of sake have additives such as sugars or organic acids. Rice, the fermentable component, contains lots of starch but no sugars and we need those sugars to make alcohol. So we convert the starch to sugars using koji mold and then the sugar to alcohol using yeast. When making beer, these two processes take place sequentially but in sake, they take place at the same time in the same tank, making sake one of the very few beverages in the world to be made using multiple parallel fermentation. Sake is known as Nihonshu in Japan. It's the country's national drink. In fact, Nihonshu literally means Japan's booze. Overseas, you hear it pronounced sake, but the word is sake, and here in Japan, it means alcohol, so beer and wine and whiskey are all sake. Number two, don't call it Japanese rice wine. Yes, it's sold in bottles that look like this, and yes, sometimes it's served in glasses that look like this. And yes, both sake and wine have an ABV of roughly 14%, plus or minus a couple of percent. But sake is not a wine. One key difference is the production process. Wine is made from grapes, which contain a lot of sugar and easily ferment, while rice doesn't have that sugar, and that's why we need to undergo the complex multiple parallel fermentation process I mentioned earlier. Now, even in Japan, you'll hear it referred to as Japanese wine. Sake consumption is in decline domestically, and invested parties will desperately do anything to help people relate to the drink. But referring to sake as rice wine leads to flawed analogies, which I think prevent people from appreciating the drink on its own merits. One of these is the need to characterize sake as being either dry or sweet. Typically, sake has less bitterness and acidity than wine and more umami and sweetness. And although the term karakuchi, which you sometimes see on the side of a bottle of sake, is often translated as dry, it expresses a different nuance to the dryness we associate with, say, a dry white wine. Another key difference is that the length of a finish of a sake, known as the kire, is not considered indicative of the quality of the sake at all, unlike wine. In fact, a precise short finish is considered a highly desirable quality for a sake. Number three, learn some sake lingo. Look for Jumai Daiginjo is something many sake newbies are taught to seek when searching for a tasty tipple. But what do those words actually mean? To answer that, let's take a step back. The key metric that differentiates sake grades is the rice polishing ratio. The outer husk of a grain of rice contains a lot of fats, proteins, and lipids. That's what makes it great to eat. But we don't want those things in sake brewing because they can lead to a lot of off flavors. So we try to remove the outer husk of a grain of rice in a process called rice milling or polishing. Ginjo refers to the rice polishing ratio. It means that the rice has been polished down to at least 60%. 
i.e. 40% of the outer husk has been removed. And daiging jo means it's been polished down to 50%. It's a lot of effort. It takes about 36 hours to polish 1200 kilograms of rice down to 50%. The word junmai means pure rice. It refers to sake made with only the four ingredients of rice, water, yeast, and koji mold. No other additives, such as brewing alcohol or sugars, are um, added. So to some people, Junmai Dai Gingjo is the most premium grade of sake you can buy. It has the highest rice polishing ratio and no brewing alcohol added. However, number four, don't just drink Junmai Dai Gingjo. While Junmai pure rice sounds like a good thing, just because a sake is not junmai does not make it inferior. The addition of a small amount of brewing alcohol is used by sake brewers to transform and enhance flavor profiles and aromas and can lead to some incredible drinks. Similarly, you can polish the rice all you want, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you started with high quality rice in the first place. All else being equal, and it rarely is in the world of sake, a higher polishing ratio will lead to a lighter and more refined sake. But limiting yourself to that means you're gonna miss out on a world of fantastic flavors. You know, these concepts are relatively new. It was in the 1930s that a new vertical type rice milling machine allowed sake breweries to polish rice to even greater degrees. In 1980, Dewa Zakura, a sake brewery in Yamagata, launched a ginjo sake named Oka Ginjo. Back then, ginjo sakes were primarily brewed for competition purposes, and the word was relatively unheard of outside of the sake brewing community. However, Oka Ginjo proved to be a huge sales success and triggered the so-called ginjo boom of the 1980s. As for adding brewing alcohol, it's been known since the Edo period that adding small quantities of brewer's alcohol leads to enhancing flavors and aromas when making sake. During World War II, rice became an increasingly scarce commodity. So the Japanese government ordered sake brewers to cut their sake with more and more alcohol. As rice supplies normalized during peacetime, some breweries made a point of ceasing the use of brewing alcohol when making some of their sake, and soon other breweries followed suit. I love all sake, as long as it's made from quality ingredients by craft breweries. Go and check out a Hongjozo. This is a sake that will have a rice polishing ratio of at least 70% and some small amount of brewing alcohol added. This typically leads to a flavor profile that pairs very well with food, such as sushi or salads and other light dishes and is very sessionable. Ultimately, you should trust your own taste preferences. Non-Junmai Daigingjo Sake will be a lot cheaper and exploring that world will leave your taste buds happy and your wallet heavier. Number five, hot sake is not bad sake. One of the things that makes sake special is that it can be enjoyed at a range of temperatures, depending on the drink, the season, and your own personal preferences. Hot sake is commonly referred to as atsukan and is heated by placing a ceramic sake container called a tokori in a pot of hot water and left to warm up to around 50 degrees Celsius. Avoid heating it too quickly or too intensely and definitely don't do it in a microwave. Don't. Do you like Japanese sake, Mr. Bond? Or would you prefer vodka martini? Oh no, I like sake. Especially when it's served at the correct temperature. If you're after a chilled sake, ask for reshu or here style, and this is typically served at between five and 10 degrees Celsius. Jo-on is often translated as room temperature, but more correctly means sake served between 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. Most professional sake tasting is done at this temperature because it's considered to be the point where the sake's flavors are most balanced. The taste and aroma of a sake may transform dramatically depending on the temperature it's served at. The label on the bottle may give you some recommendations from the brewery, but you might want to experiment to see which ways you prefer. Many sake experts would suggest 
that Dai Gingjo and Gingjo sakes are best served slightly chilled to enhance their flavour profiles, while many Hongjozo sakes do well both ways. As it happens, in general, less polished rice is considered better for warming because heating the drink allows you to bring out the complex flavours and aromas. Given that greater rice polishing adds considerable expense to the sake making process, this has led to the unfortunate corollary that hot sake equals cheap sake and ergo bad sake and is something to look down on. The binary hot cold mindset is something more commonly encountered overseas. Here in Japan, during the Edo period, sake was typically served warm year round, with some exceptions namely during Shinto religious rituals and festivals. It was only in the 1980s, during the Gingjo boom, that serving sake chilled became the norm. And it was probably influenced as well, dare I say it, by the chilling of white wine. So, hot sake is not bad sake. In fact, many amazing sake are made to deliberately be served warm. These five tips will help you ramp up your sake game. Keep exploring and very soon you'll be a sake pro. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more from Kampai Planet. Until next time, Kampai!